comfortable. Hi guys, yes, it's Shelby, your favorite fitness influencer back again with another <gasps> supplement haul, <laughs> right? So today, um, I just wanted to talk to you um, about these amazing products because, you know, when a company reaches out to me, the first things that I think are about the commissions, I mean the, um, <laughs> the, um, the, um, um, credibility, right? That's it. Uh, the credibility of the company because you guys know I don't just get sponsored by anyone. I get sponsored by everyone. And so today I wanted to share with you a few of my latest favorite addictions. <laughs> you know what I mean? This is one of my most favorite brands. Okay. Tried, tested, true um they really care about the environment and your health because you know i am all about like health and fitness and being healthy and fit without further ado <laughs> um they're called um a chronic cramp Cranked, 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 <laughs> cranked. Um, i really like them because um it says natural, um, low carb and protein and gluten free on the front. And so I don't really care what it says on the back because I already know just from that, that, that it's totally good for me. <laughs> 20 grams of protein, you guys. It's in chalk honeycomb flavor. And I mean, oh, I just, I just, I stan. Okay. Like I stan. I love, like, it's amazing. And also, Quest just came out with like a new flavor. Hello. <laughs> this is chocolate sprinkled donut flavor. <laughs> they read my mind. <laughs> Again, 20 grams of protein because that's all that matters. I don't even bother looking at the back of all of these ingredients because, um, yeah, I can't even pronounce half of them, but I don't think it even really matters because you know what? I trust that these brands care about my health and well-being. So I eat them every day. I don't know, you guys, I just love them. I think they're so great. Um, <laughs> um, I'm sharing with you guys today because I genuinely believe in these brands um, and you know me I would never recommend a brand to you unless I was like 100 million percent like on board oh by the way if you want to get 10% off you can use my discount code make sure you buy both products so I get more money <laughs> I mean I mean so you get more worth out of your order that's pretty much it um, I don't have anything else of value to tell you so <laughs> Have an awesome day. Um, don't forget to buy, because you know, it lines my pocket, you know, and fills your stomach with processed shit that you don't need. I mean, I mean, um, really great protein um, and things that are just gonna make you healthy and fit, because I am a fitness influencer. Um, okay, you guys, I love you. Peace. Um, see you in my next What I Eat in a Day video. Bye. <sighs> I feel a Shelly run coming on. We're gonna go in hard today, and today we're gonna be talking about the bullshit food industry and how its brainwashing tactics have trickled through into the health and fitness industry and duping you into unhealthy habits that are not only stopping you from getting results, but also making you sick and fat and depressed in the long run. By the way, this topic is so multi-layered. There is so much to say about this that I'm definitely not gonna be able to fit it all in one video. So my aim here is just to give you a broad overview and I encourage you to go away after seeing this video and research for yourself because boy, this is a rabbit hole topic. 
trust me, you will never look at a bag of Cheetos again in the same way for the rest of your life. We're gonna be talking about the fitness brands and the supplement companies and their lemming fitness influencers and how they push their useless, garbage, toxic supplements and products, selling you a lie and making you believe that in order for you to look like them, that you need to consume their garbage products. Because here's the truth, that none of these fitness influencers and supplement brands are gonna tell you, you don't need supplement to get results. This is the biggest lie that the fitness industry tells you. Protein powders, pre-workouts, energy bars, fat burners, low calorie healthy protein cookies, they're garbage. It's all trash. Okay, I'm just gonna preface this video by telling you that I, as a fitness influencer. You guys know I hate that word. I prefer the term fitness educator because I have never been sponsored by any fitness brand or any supplement company. I get messages in my emails and in my DMs all the time from top, top fitness and supplement brands. Every single time they come into my inbox, I send them straight to the trash because that is where they belong. I refuse to be affiliated with any company that does not align with my values. I'm not talking to all of you gym bros, I'm talking specifically to the average woman who watches my channel. You do not need this shit. It doesn't give you any performance related advantage, okay? None. You're much better off eating a real whole food diet and sticking to the basics, the fundamentals of health. Stress reduction, clean diet, exercise, sunlight, grounding, meditation, sleep, quality sleep, is far more beneficial to your health and well-being to getting actual results than the shit you're shoveling into your mouth from these dubious fitness companies. If that's all you get from this video, I've done my job. So just be mindful of which fitness influencers advice you follow. A big red flag is always if they are saying that their way is the only way and they're trying to peddle to you any sort of fitness supplements, <laughs> run because honestly they're full of shit. and if they actually understood anything about true health and well-being they wouldn't be promoting this toxic crap to you and that's just the truth of it at this point throw the whole industry away okay what you put in your body matters a lot and i'm not just talking about supplements here either okay i'm talking about the food industry as a whole So first off, before we get into the nitty gritty of what I'm gonna say here, I want you to really understand something that's just really important. And that is that your body is an incredibly amazing, complex organism, quite literally by divine design. You only get one and when you break it, you don't get a new one. This is also something that's super important for you to understand about your body. Across the span of our evolution as a species, physiologically, our bodies haven't evolved that much. But if you look at our very, very short time through history, only a blip in time, right? When we look at the agricultural revolution and we look at the industrial revolution and more recently, the advancements in uh, science and technology, the way we consume our food and, and more importantly, how our food is produced has taken leaps and bounds ahead way, 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 way faster than our physiological bodies can handle. Our bodies have simply not evolved to eat the types of foods that are pushed onto us today. It's no surprise uh, to tell you that our food system is sick and broken, but it's somehow passed off as healthy and normal in our Western society. And no one seems to be questioning it, least of all the fitness industry. In fact, they're especially problematic because they're the ones that influence us the naive masses um, as to what is fit and healthy. And so they are largely responsible for the mess that we find ourselves in today. The foods that you eat are like an instruction manual for your body. The nutrients that you consume literally dictate every process that happens within your body from your digestion to your hormones, your metabolism, your brain function, your immune system, even your mood. And if you're constantly filling it with unnatural food-like products that it cannot recognize nor understand, it will eventually degrade from the inside out. The human body as an organism is very resilient, but there's only so much that it can take. 
Now, douchebag gym bros and 20 year old fitness influencers get super triggered when I say this because they build their whole careers, their whole identity, their whole philosophy, their whole livelihoods and business models on this calories in, calories out model. And while I'm not saying, that calories don't matter. They're not the be all and end all, and there's so much more that goes into this, right? But because they ascribe to that, counting your calories and tracking your macros is the only thing that matters, they miss this whole dimension of actual health. So they weigh their food and they track their macros and they do their silly little algebra equations just so that they can eat a meal. But it's totally worth it because they're still justified in eating their franken food processed garbage crap that they're addicted to and stay completely ignorant to the fact that what they're eating is slowly degrading their body from the inside out. And behind closed doors, they then mask their rotting insides by taking performance enhancing drugs that allow them to train and look like superhuman beings, all while peddling their crappy processed supplements onto you. It's a lie, it's deceiving, it's immoral, and it's the polar opposite of what health and fitness should be. Yet they're so entrenched in this broken paradigm, they are so brainwashed by this matrix, that anyone who has a differing opinion, they have to attack because they are literally clueless. Now I'm not saying these are necessarily bad people, well, mostly, but 99% of the time they are too invested in their ideology and they're a part of the problem themselves and so they can't think or see outside the box and that is the issue. They're not truth seekers, they're sheep. They hide behind their academia and their science studies when in reality, <laughs> if you have a brain in your head, you know that the science is completely and utterly flawed. When it comes to health and fitness, when it comes to food, the science is completely flawed. I'm gonna give you a little golden nugget here, okay? A different perspective. Stop thinking about food in terms of calories and macros and instead approach your food with nutrient density and hormone health at the forefront because it is the quality of your food that determines the quantity you consume. And anyone who is an advocate of optimal health will tell you that. Here's the crux of it. If you want your dream body, you have to strive for a healthy body first, period. And that includes a healthy mind too, by the way, but that's a completely different video. But the problem is that what we're told is healthy is in fact not at all. And so it's super confusing for you as an average woman who's just trying to look and feel her best to really understand what is good for your body. Here at Strong Curves, our motto is health first always, which basically just means give your body more of what makes it thrive. Hint uh, real foods, but in order for those foods to have a positive effect on you, you first need to eliminate the things that make you degrade. Hint, processed crap. As long as you are eating that shit, you will never thrive. And that's why everyone in the current broken paradigm of fitness all ascribe to calorie counting and restriction and excessive cardio and exhaustive HIIT workouts and relying on willpower to get you there. These controlled and restrictive techniques are necessary in a fitness paradigm that doesn't understand health. You know, what's deemed normal in the health and fitness paradigm today is reducing everything down to an equation, focusing only on the metrics, and that is an atomistic approach. It's about control. And inevitably, all that does in the long term is disconnect you from your bodily signals. It disempowers you. A newer, healthier paradigm, and this is what Strong Curves is all about, is the nutrient density model with a holistic and holistic approach. Listening to your body, being intuitive, and allowing your body to do what it innately knows. That is true freedom by listening to your intuition. And that's how we've survived and thrived for eons as a human race. It boggles my mind that this is considered out there. <laughs> I don't count calories. I don't restrict myself. I don't track macros. I don't weigh my food. I don't do excessive cardio. I don't do any of that. I don't ascribe to that model at all. Yet I am fit and I am healthy. I have a body that I am proud of. I am strong, I am healthy. I am happy, 
So, so what is it then? If I've gone against the status quo and I've gone against the current paradigm of health and fitness, how am I an anomaly? Am I just lucky? Is it just my genetics? No, it's simply because I have prioritized my health over everything consistently for the last decade and I have exited the current paradigm of health and fitness, the current matrix that has kept so many of you stuck. I exited and what I'm going to tell you now about the food industry is going to help you exit too. Ask yourself if you have any niggling health concerns, these seemingly unrelated symptoms that you just can't pinpoint why you have them and they're just chronic and they become so normal that you just put up with them. I'm talking about things like poor digestion, gas, bloating, cramps, constipation, diarrhea, skin breakouts, acne, rashes, allergies, autoimmune issues, water retention, excessive cellulite, stubborn fat, low energy, chronic fatigue, brain fog, headaches, nausea, muscle joint pain, mood swings, anxiety, depression, overly sensitive or irritable mood, overthinking, endometriosis, heavy painful periods, loss of period, low libido, insomnia, trouble falling asleep, light sleep, wide at night, wake up tired. And that's just a few on the list, but maybe you've been to your doctor or a dietitian or a nutritionist and none of them have been able to help you and they just tell you that your blood's come up normal and your tests come up normal and they can't figure out why on earth you might be feeling this way. And they make you feel like you're crazy and that it's all in your head and that you're just complaining, right? Have you been there? Because I certainly have. And it wasn't until that I took my health in my own hands and started to cultivate an intuition that I actually managed to heal myself and heal myself fully. And here I am now sat making this video in the hopes of helping anyone who might be going through what I went through. If that sounded like you, then here's my advice. Step number one, my friend, look at what you're eating. Because honestly, girl, Low energy, mood swings, brain fog, bloating, cramping. This is not normal. But our social media feeds are just saturated with fitness influencers. They're shotgunning pre-workout and binging on food porn, disguising it all as balance because hashtag authentic and hashtag real, showing off their bloated bellies. Just because millions of other people are also experiencing these symptoms doesn't make it normal. It's not normal. This is not your natural state. If you have any of these symptoms, it is your body crying out for help. But we just ignore it. Oh, it's just normal. It's just part of being a female. It's just part of health and fitness. If she's feeling like this, and look at her, she's got abs, then it must be normal. Your body is always trying to heal itself. Period. It is a healing machine. All of these symptoms are your body's way of saying, Hey, you know that um, low calorie uh, plant-based ice cream you keep eating? Yeah, that ain't it, sis. But it doesn't have a voice. So it tells you through its own language. Physical symptoms. Your natural state as a human being is one of well-being which means you feel energized, clear-minded, free, strong, pain-free and happy. That is true health and fitness. But somehow we've forgotten all that in favor of a centaur ass and six-pack abs at any cost. You see, the damage that processed products do is so insidious, it's so undetected, uh, that it just kind of flies under the radar. No one questions it. No one puts two and two together. It kind of just gets swept under the carpet. You see, it's all right for a 20-year-old fitness young thing in her prime to just jump up and down, do a few burpees and eat some lettuce and then guzzle Halo Top ice cream and still have abs. But what message are we sending out to young girls who are trying to get healthy? We're basically saying, hey, you can totally indulge in your food addiction and still have abs. <laughs> and this is the thing, we're kind of flabbergasted. In our 20s, we can do whatever we want. And then bam, it hits us. We turn 30 and everything goes down south. We're like, what the hell? Why have I got pains? Why is my gut so bad? Why is my skin so bad? Why am I so low in energy? Why have I got brain fog? Stubborn weight gain. You have to work 10 times as harder to get tiny results. And you don't put two and two together. You don't realize that your lifestyle and your eating habits that you had from way back when you were a teenager has insidiously, slowly, like a slow creeper, caught up with you. And that is what metabolic damage is. It takes years to come into effect. It takes years for you to suddenly wake up and go, 
wow, something's not right with me. And you know, just because some young 20 year old has a centaur ass and six pack abs does not mean she's healthy. I know this all too well from the years that I've spent in the fitness industry and particularly competing in bodybuilding. And it was one of the reasons that I stopped that these people that you see that look so amazing are so unhealthy. They're, they're probably the most unhealthy people I've ever met. You know, they suffer from hormonal imbalance, they lose their periods, they lose their hair, they have terrible gut health, body dysmorphia, depression, anxiety, low self-esteem. I mean, the list goes on. Okay, so I've been exposing the fitness influencers and the fitness and supplement companies, but they're really not the ones at the top of the food chain here. Oh, no, 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 no. It's the entire food industry because they're the ones that push this toxic, garbage, processed, food-like products onto us. They're the ones responsible for why we are sick, fat, depressed, and addicted to sugar. And they're in cahoots with the pharmaceutical companies who push their drugs onto us, profiting off our sickness, and the health and fitness industry profiting off our obesity. And the government bodies that advocate these diets full of this toxic garbage, based on corrupt scientific data by the academics who are in the pockets of the food industry, manipulate and cherry pick scientific data to fit their nefarious agenda. They know full well what's going on and they're all for it because it keeps you, their slave, addicted to their slop and easier to control because this is only about power and money to them. Take a look at this Harvard Chan Instagram post that I saw the other day. This is absolute drivel, promoting whole grains and seed oils and added sugar. Why are these things even on the list? These things are not nutrient dense food. They have no nutritional value to you. And in fact, they're the top three ingredients when in combination, make processed foods. <laughs> the processed foods are responsible for your chronic illness. And then look at the tiny, 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 tiny amount of animal protein and dairy and root vegetables. I mean, I am losing my mind. Am I in the twilight zone right now? Because when you walk through the supermarket, through the endless aisles of this toxic food-like products boxed up in colorful spangly boxes, with clever marketing on the front, with things that reel you in, like low calorie and gluten free and natural. Because the reality is that every single brand that you see on the shelves is owned by only 10 companies. 10, that's it. You think you have choice? You don't. You have bountiful variety, but zero choice. Big food owns you. Let that sink in. They have a complete monopoly over your food and they wish to keep it that way so that you remain oblivious to the truth and addicted to their slop. This will show you what I mean when, when I say that we are as a society completely dysfunctional and delusional. We have so much convenience and so much variety that globally every single year we throw away into landfill 940 billion dollars worth of food and yet we still have people starving on this planet that is 1.3 billion tons of food the bottom line is if you continue to consume these processed items you are directly contributing to this problem so first of all let's just get one thing straight that these processed and packaged foods are not really food, okay? They're not actually food. They're food-like products, right? Don't get me wrong, they are marketed as food. You chew on it and you, it tastes like food and it smells like food, but it's fake. And these big food corporations, they spend billions of dollars hiring food scientists to make your fake foods more addictive. Just to give you an idea of how lucrative this industry is, the food flavors market in 2019 was globally valued at $14.6 billion. These ultra-processed food-like products 
are manipulated and engineered and chemically altered and mixed with all sorts of additives and preservatives to distort it beyond its natural state. What these food scientists do is create flavors and additives that make your food hyper palatable to the point of addiction. It alters the hormonal pathways, it alters your brain chemistry so that you will overeat and come back for more. And the frightening thing is, is that food manufacturers are not obligated by law to tell you what is even in your food. If you see artificial or even natural flavors on the ingredients list, then it's been made in a lab. So straight off the bat, alarm bells should be ringing. You could literally be eating anything. Now in these processed foods, usually there's way above a hundred ingredients, often things like coal tar or crude oil, and even beaver anal glands. I wish I was kidding. <laughs> These things should not be ingested. Uh, another example, and this is for my US peeps out there, because these ingredients are banned in Europe, but only up until recently, I think maybe in the last year or two, there were seven ingredients that were found in most of your processed foods on your supermarket shelves that caused cancer in animals. And the only reason that they became banned is because there was such immense pressure from consumer groups that they filed a lawsuit. If they hadn't have put that pressure on, these ingredients would still be in your food. The reality is that big food and the FDA do not give a sh** about your health. Please tell me, does any of this sound ethical to you? I'm legit losing my mind that this is allowed and that no one is saying anything. And the saddest part is that because we are all so addicted to these frankenfood products that are hyper palatable and designed to make us addictive, when we do try and go and eat actual real food from Mother Earth, it tastes bland and boring to us. And all that does is make it super, super hard to stick to any sort of healthy routine. It's a vicious cycle because your brain is literally hijacked. And the catch 22 is that if you continue to eat these foods year after year, day in, day out, you just become desensitized. It's the same as any addiction, whether it's a substance or sex or food, your brain doesn't know the difference. It's all the same chemical process that happens. And this is where dopamine and your hormones come in. Remember I told you to think about your food as nutrient density and hormone health, this is what I'm talking about. So one of the more alarming chemical processes that happen within your body when you eat these processed foods is all down to um, a neurotransmitter called dopamine. It's often referred to as the pleasure chemical as it affects the reward center in your brain. And when you eat these processed products that are really hyper palatable, meaning the flavors are off chops and it's full of these chemicals and additives, they tamper with your dopamine tolerance. That means the more that you eat of this product, the less you feel the effects of this pleasure-seeking activity, even though you're consuming the same amount. And then, of course, you have to eat more and more of it in order to get that same pleasure hit. That's why it's so hard to fight your cravings with willpower alone when you are on a diet that includes a lot of these processed items. And inevitably, with every high, always comes a crashing glow. But it's not your fault. Your brain chemistry literally won't let you. It's just you've been given horrific advice by the majority of the fitness industry. It's a vicious cycle that pollutes your body and your mind. And food manufacturers know this. In fact, they use it against you. They want you to be addicted to your products because it means that you'll keep coming back for more and more, and in the process, you line their pockets. They know that their foods cause chronic illness and exacerbate your anxiety and depression. All they care about is making the most addictive food at the highest profit margins and the lowest cost. Not only are you physically addicted, but you're also emotionally addicted to these foods. And so this is going to trigger a lot of you. And your arguments against me might be something like everything in moderation, or health is balance, or it's the dose that makes the poison. Here's why that's a cop-out. Really, deep down, that attitude is just 
perpetuating the problem. Now obviously something like a Halo Top ice cream is far healthier than a McDonald's caramel sundae. And while I'm not saying that if you eat something like this once in a blue moon it's going to kill you, the philosophy everything in moderation just doesn't work for the majority of people. If it did we wouldn't be in this mess. And yes I know there'll be people who will say things like well you can't compare food to drugs it's not really the same thing. But yes I can because because it is, it literally is. Take a look at this study by Dr. Lustig, who has done a lot of work on sugar. And this study in particular um, shows that in cocaine addicted rats, when they were given the choice between sugar water and cocaine, they chose sugar water. And I'm gonna be really blunt, and here's the truth of it. Defending your right to continue indulging in your fake food addiction in the name of balance while continuing to enable a destructive food system that does not care about your well-being is not only such first world problems but it epitomizes our collective delusion, our insane dysfunction in our modern society. Our belief system around food is so emotionally charged and our perception of our current paradigm is so warped that we defend these unhealthy addictions and pass them off as normal and they become acceptable in the eyes of society. Why is this? We say that we care about the planet, yet we still support a broken paradigm that exploits the planet and every living being on it. We say we care about our health, but then we continue to buy convenience processed foods. By the way, don't get me started on big ag, okay? Mass farming and feed feedlots and monocropping and all of that horrendous stuff that goes on in the agricultural industry, that deserves a whole video in itself. Acceptance and taking radical responsibility for your actions and your behaviours without trying to blame anyone or anything outside of yourself, that's where true transformative power begins. I hear a lot of people say, you know, lighten up, don't be so serious about this, you know, stop being such food police over this, um, like, it's not that big a deal. Like, yeah, yeah, we know processed foods aren't great for your health, but what's the harm really? And this is the ignorance that I'm trying to shed light on. A lot of people argue that health, that true health is about balance and that you know you, sh you should be able to have naughty treats uh, on a healthy diet. Here's a radical thought for you. How about balance means that you're not addicted to these food-like products? How about it means that you actually want to eat healthy all the time because it makes you feel so good? How about balance means that you don't constantly feel hungry or crave for certain things? How about balance meaning you actually listen to what your body wants intuitively? How about balance means that you treat your body with respect? That is true health. Very, very few people, least of all fitness influencers, are practicing this. If you feel restrictive eating a species appropriate diet of real whole foods, and the thought of not being able to eat and indulge in your food addictions at least once a week, it's absolutely a symptom of societal conditioning and programming by the food industry. This goes so much deeper than just wanting a mediocre healthy life and to sit on the fence and still be able to indulge in your bag of Cheetos once a week. This is about our collective contribution to a system that is designed to disempower us and disconnect us from our bodies. At the end of the day, it's all about control. They don't want you to think for yourself. They don't want you to have a healthy body. They don't want you to question what's happening. Here's a silver lining to the oppressive black cloud that is looming over our heads and our health. We hold the power, not the food industry, not the scientists, not the governments, we do, because we are the ones with the buying power. Start caring about what's in your food and where it's coming from so that you can make informed decisions about who you are supporting with the dollars in your hand. That is how you make a direct positive change on a global scale. So here's some advice on how to get started. Number one, look at the brands that you buy. What are their values? Do they care about your health, sustainability, the environment? What do they stand for? Or are they greenwashing you? Now this is really hard to decipher 
because food marketing is very, very, very clever. And the processed and packaged food companies are always trying to pander to what you want. It's supply and demand. So recently there has been a massive upsurge of consumers wanting more ethical, more sustainable, more eco-friendly, healthier options, organic as well. And food companies aren't stupid. They'll see that as a really great opportunity to make more money and they'll tap into that desire of yours. But they don't really want to change their mode of operations. They've got it good poisoning us for profit with their cheap and dangerous ingredients and they want to keep it that way. So instead of actually doing what's right, they'll keep you satisfied by saying anything to make you think that they've changed when in fact nothing has changed at all. They use clever marketing tactics to manipulate you through the shiny sparkly boxes with the buzzwords on the front, brainwashing you with their loud but empty claims. Gluten free, natural, low calorie. They'll say anything to reel you in. The truth is that what really matters is on the back of the box. Which brings me to number two. Learn to read your food labels. Obviously the best thing you can do is just completely ditch the processed products and then you don't even have to worry about this. But I understand we're human. We still live in this paradigm where a lot of the things are convenient. We can't completely get rid of processed items. And so if you are gonna buy them, make sure that you choose ones that are better for your health. What you really want to be looking at is not the calories or the grams of sugar or fat. You wanna be looking at the ingredients list. There is nothing more important. Skip everything else. Ignore what's on the front of the packet. Go straight to the ingredients list. Watch out for hidden sugars in their many, many different forms. Stabilizers, preservatives, emulsifiers, thickeners, gums, anti-caking agents, artificial and natural flavors, sweeteners, e-numbers and colorings, and hydrogenated vegetable oils in its many forms. None of these things should be in your body. They are toxic. If you consume them on a daily basis for long periods of time, they will degrade your body. Which brings me to number three. It's the only important thing and it's the whole reason I've made this video. Just eat real food. It's the best thing you can do for your health. Forget the supplements and the counting calories and the macros and, and whatever diet you choose to follow. None of that matters unless you first get the groundwork right. And that is to predominantly eat nutrient dense, real whole foods as nature intended. Support your local farmers, eat seasonal and local. Move away from supermarkets and buy from farmers markets. If you don't have a farmers market, maybe look into a communal garden nearby. Perhaps start growing your own food. Every little helps. It's amazing what you can grow from a windowsill in your kitchen. If you can only buy from supermarkets, then at least buy predominantly real whole foods instead of going to the packaged convenience aisles. Learn the basic and sacred art of preparing and cooking your own food for you and your family at home. This is a skill that is just completely lost and gone over our heads for our, our modern society. And it's actually something that is so important, not just only for our health, but also for uh, a sense of social belonging. It's the foundation of health. It is connection to self and it's what builds communities. Now if this triggers you and you found yourself coming up with lots of excuses and interjections as to why this is too hard and why you can't, I get it. You know, our system is not geared up to make this easy. This is a life choice that uh, will mean you have to make sacrifices. And it's hard to move away from convenience, I understand. And not everyone has the same opportunities or the same structures where they live, I get it. And while I'm not asking you to be perfect, and certainly I'm not perfect either, there are many things that I can still improve on. I understand that every little helps and you have to just be willing to make small changes. Do the best with what you can, from where you are. That's all you can do. And if at the very least what you do is simply share my video and spread this truth, then that also contributes to the collective change. So here's the bottom line. I don't care what diet you follow, whether you choose to be a vegan or a carnivore, whether you do keto 
or paleo or whatever diet, if it fits your macros, I, I don't care. Arguing over which diet is better is so infantile and so irrelevant when you look at the deeper, bigger picture that's going on here. If we could just stop picking at the minute of this diet and, or that diet, this person's wrong, that person's right, this food is bad, that food is good. If we can just stop doing that and arguing for our limitations and instead look at this from a larger, deeper, broader perspective, one that is rooted in, in truth, one that wants healing for the collective, one that cares about all of us being well and healthy and not dictating to the other what's right or wrong, coming less from the ego and more from the heart space, then we might actually have a fighting chance at making a change. What we should be doing is uniting against this broken system that we find ourselves in and moving away from the processed, packaged, convenience food industry and focusing more on real whole foods. If we can't agree on anything else, let's just start there. What is the point of being a vegan or a carnivore or following keto or whatever diet if you are still supporting and perpetuating this broken food system? Get this base level right and then choose whatever diet that suits your individual preferences, that suits your goals, that suits your morals and your ethics and your culture and let everyone else just do whatever they want to. The main thing about this video is that I want you guys to start trusting yourselves and become critical thinkers. Use your logical brain, look at all of the facts, look at both sides of the story with an open mind and try not to get too attached to any one narrative. Otherwise, you end up just falling prey to ideology and dogma. When you have a broader view, when you have a deeper knowledge, then you can go within and ask yourself in your heart what feels true and right for you. That is what discernment is. That's what it means to listen to your intuition. But discernment and intuition are almost impossible to embody if you are still addicted to these vessel poisoning, mind rotting, soul destroying, toxic products and then defending the very system that is trying to keep you dumb and weak. It's not just about the diet and the exercise, it's not just about the abs and the booty, it's so much deeper than that. It's about you, it's about your inner health, it's about your mind and your connection to this vessel of flesh and blood. The only thing that carries you through this life and in turn also connects you to every other living thing on this planet. I'm here to point you towards your own self-empowerment. That's why I wrote my Strong Curves Ultimate Guide. That's why I am here making these videos, because your body is literally your temple. It's the gateway to your expansion. It's the bridge between your inner and outer worlds to a, a higher consciousness, to a more connected and happier and more blissful you. And not just physically, but emotionally and spiritually too. The systems that rule on our planet, they understand this. They understand that you as a sovereign being who is in full control of their body, in optimal health and of sound mind, cannot be controlled. That's why they use food amongst many other things to keep you in a state of fear, to keep you in a state of ignorance, because if you are easier to control, then they can stay at the top and keep you down there, not questioning anything. Now, all of this might seem really dark and negative, but it's really necessary for your evolution, because in order to move towards your positive growth, you have to be shown the darkness, the things that are hard to hear, the things that have been keeping you in your state of ignorance with the wall pulled over your eyes because you can only choose a different way and make a change when you know what no longer serves you. Only then are you truly free and empowered. So I wanna finish on a positive note because it really doesn't have to be all doom and gloom. Now that you know the truth, you can't be manipulated anymore. 
You can take your power back now because you create your own reality and you always have a choice. And every small, tiny step in the right direction is a step towards the collapse of the old paradigm into a newer, healthier version of yourself, your loved ones, and the whole planet. Don't get swept up in all of the fear and all of the negativity and all of the horrible things that are happening on the planet at the moment. Have the veil lifted, but always come back to yourself. Always come back to what's true. Be informed, but hold the light. Stay strong. I love you. Thank you for watching this video. Please, please share this video as far and wide as you can. People need to know this truth. If you like what I've been saying and if you want to follow the Strong Curves approach, go to the link in the description box. Go and grab your copy of the Strong Curves Ultimate Guide. It will change your life. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will catch you in another video. Bye.